precisely 6.45. This is the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. News edited by Lal Malavarachi and read by Sharif Tahir. Headlines The National Poson Week commences today. New railway service from Anuradhapura to Mihintale. The President stated that through the Urumea program, the government's intent is to express gratitude to farmers. Defected ballot boxes will be repaired. Applications for admissions in state universities commences at present. Foreign News Israeli Prime Minister dissolves war cabinet. Sports Sri Lanka ends World Cup campaign with a solitary win. Local news in detail. The National Poson Week commences today and will continue until next Monday. The Ministry of Buddhist Asana, Religious and Cultural Affairs has organized several events for Poson poets centered around Anuradhapura, Mihintale and Tantrimale. The annual week-long period chanting ceremony to bless the country and the people commenced yesterday at the Jai Shri Mahabodhi premises. All arrangements have been made to provide sanitary, health and transport facilities for the pilgrims who visited Anuradhapura and Mihintale sacred areas during the week. There are over 100 foot dancers in Anuradhapura for the convenience of the devotees. Meanwhile, the Mihintale Aloka Puja will be held from the 20th to the 22nd of this month. The new railway line built from Anuradhapura station to the Mihintale junction with Indian assistance was opened under the patronage of Atapastana Adipati, Venerable Pallegama Hemirathana Nayakathera and Transport Minister Dr. Bandulukunu Vardhana yesterday. The railway line, which was built and abandoned without completion during the time of the late President Ranasinghe Premadasa, has been completed and renovated at a cost of 650 million rupees to provide ease of travel to the pilgrims coming from Anuradhapura to Mihintale to engage in religious observances. Accordingly, the Northern Railway Line from Mihintale to Anuradhapura and the new railway line have been constructed as two tracks. Minister Dr. Gunavardhana said that steps will be taken to provide free travel facilities for devotees using the train who come for religious observances on June 21st, 22nd and 23rd on the occasion of Pusan Poya. President Ranul Vikramasinghe stated that through the Urumea program, the government's intent is to express gratitude to farmers who have supplied rice to the country despite not owing the land. He also emphasized that the current government aims to provide both knowledge and rights to the people akin to how CWW Kannagara promoted education through free schooling. President Vikram Singh made these remarks at a ceremony held at the Ampelipitiya Mahavali Stadium. The event was for the awarding of freehold land deeds to 1,524 out of 45,253 eligible settlers in the Mahavali Valava area as part of the National Urumea program to provide 2 million freehold land deeds. The President participated in the Urumea ceremony and the symbolic distribution of land deeds. Addressing the event, President Vikram Singh further stated that he has instructed all relevant authorities to issue freehold land deeds within the next two months. District secretaries, the Land Commissioner General and the Surveyor's Office will collaborate to expedite the delivery of these land deeds. Local government officials will also contribute ensuring the efficient implementation of this program. The President further said that for the past 75 years, people have been given land without freehold rights. The Urumea program was introduced to grant these legal land rights, marking a significant change. During difficult times, everyone shared the burden. Now that the economy is improving, everyone should benefit, especially the farmers who provide rice to the nation. This is the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation giving you the news. Continuing with more stories here at home. The Election Commission has announced that any defects in ballot boxes will be rectified once polling station details are obtained. Election Commission Chairman R.M.A.L. Ratnayaka said many damaged ballot boxes used in previous elections have been identified and will be sent to the government factory for repairs. 
The chairman also stated that a census of offices will be conducted soon in preparation for the upcoming election. He also plans to meet with local election monitoring organizations next week to discuss further arrangements. The University Grants Commission accepts applications for admission students who have satisfied the minimum requirements for the university admission at the GCE Advanced Level Examination held for 2023. Candidates are informed that it is compulsory to apply for university admission online. Applications are accepted until the 5th of July. Candidates are asked to send their applications duly filled before the closing date. That's local news for the moment. The main news story is brought to you by Siddhale Paveda Mahatma. The Sri Lanka Railways Department has decided to offer free train services for one week to passengers travelling between Anuradhapura and Mihintale for Posan Poya. However, necessary actions have been taken to provide a special bus service from Maho Railway Station to Anuradhapura as no trains will be running from Maho to Anuradhapura due to the ongoing renovations on the Northern Railway track. Buses have been assigned for the convenience of passengers travelling between Maho and Anuradhapura railway stations during Poson week. Accordingly, 400 additional buses have been allocated for this service. The main news story was brought to you by Siddhalepa Vedamahatma. And on watch light, recruitment of civilian students to Kotelavala Defence University is being done these days. Students can apply for degrees in a number of disciplines including medicine, engineering, law, computer science, management, social sciences and humanities, criminology, technology. Admission eligibility and further information can be obtained from the website www.kdu.ac.lk or by calling 0710219505. The recruitment is done in batch 42. That came to you on Watchlight. Coming up, World News. World News headlines Israeli Prime Minister scraps war cabinet after key departures. Putin taunts West as North Korean trip confirmed. Zuma's MK party to join South Africa's opposition lions. World News in detail. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has dissolved a six-member war cabinet, a widely expected decision that follows the departure of centrist opposition leader Benny Gantz and his ally Gadi Eisenkot. A government spokesman said the pre-existing security cabinet and the larger full cabinet would make decisions about the war with Hamas in Gaza. Since Mr. Gans quit eight days ago over what he said was the lack of strategy for the war, there have been calls from far-right ministers to take his place. By dissolving the war cabinet, Mr. Netanyahu avoids a tricky situation with his coalition partners and international allies. Russian President Vladimir Putin will travel to North Korea today, the Kremlin has confirmed after months of speculation of the much-hyped visit. After Kim Jong-un's big green bulletproof train trundled around Russia's far east last year, the North Korean leader invited Mr. Putin to visit him. That invitation was duly accepted. Over the past week, sources had hinted that the visit was imminent and satellite images had also spied apparent preparations underway in North Korea. Finally, on World News, South Africa's former president, Jacob Zuma, has said his political party will join the opposition alliance in parliament. He said it would co coordinate resistance to the governing coalition led by the African National Congress. Despite this, MK said it maintained that last month's elections were rigged and wanted the results annulled. Mr. Zuma's speech on Sunday was read by MK's spokesperson, Lamulu and Delela, who said the ANC was no longer part of the solution. That's on World News. Development News. 
Prime Minister Dinesh Gunawardena, who observed the progress of Malwatoya project, inspected the plans at Tantri Malaraja Mahavihara. Through this project, with the Malwatoya, is the water source and which provides irrigation to 22,000 hectares of agricultural land to produce rice and additional crops. It is expected to generate 50 megawatts of electricity through the installation of solar panels in the Malwatoya Reservoir and 1.6 megawatts of electricity is to be generated through the Malwatoya small hydropower system. That's on Development News. Moving on with Sports News. Sri Lanka ended their 2024 T20 World Cup campaign on a high note with a superb 83-run win over Netherlands in Darren Sami National Cricket Stadium, St. Lucia, yesterday. This was their first win of the group stage after back-to-back -back defeats against South Africa and Bangladesh, while the third game against Nepal was abandoned due to rain. It meant Sri Lanka ended on three points and third place in Group D behind South Africa and Bangladesh, who had confirmed their place in the Super 8 after beating Nepal in Kingstown, St. Winston yesterday and Sri Lankan victory was set up by batters and finished off clinically by the bowlers and this was a good comeback after poor batting records on USA wickets. More on sports news, Sri Lanka women look to build on their lead in the three-match ODI series against West Indies women when they meet again in the second ODI at Hambantota International Stadium today. Sri Lanka took a commanding 1-0 lead in the three-match ODI series against West Indies women, dominating the first encounter. That's on Sports News. Go the all-new NSP Ithrumitru account, NSP I am, a plan for your dream. Business News, sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. The price of a bottle of coconut oil has rapidly increased in the market by around 150 rupees. The All Salon Traditional Coconut Oil Manufacturers Association alleges that this increase is due to the coconut oil importers holding on to their stocks in anticipation of the upcoming festive season. The convener of the association, Buddhika de Silva, claimed that the coconut oil importers are arbitrarily raising prices and warned that prices could rise up to 1,000 rupees per bottle. Business News, sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. Go ekatiana youth ticket, life ticket, change ticket, near meta set penna. As for Hagena, the Kapuina, have a carana. Youth ticket, near meta set penna, friendship meta menda. The all new NSB Ithrumitru account, NSB I am, a plan for your dream. And on economic news, the global economy is expected to stabilize for the first time in three years in 2024, but at a level that is weak by recent historical standards. Global growth is projected to hold steady at 2.6% in 2024 before edging up to an average of 2.7% in 2025-2026. That is well below the 3.1% average in the decade before COVID-19, according to the World Bank's latest Global Economic Prospects report. That's on Economic News. Weather Report the prevailing rainy condition in the southwestern part of the island is expected to be somewhat enhanced in the next few days from tomorrow. Several spells of showers will occur in the western Sabragamo and northwestern provinces and in the Gaul, Mathura, Kandy and Uralia districts. Strong winds of about 40 to 50 km per hour can be expected at times over the western slopes of the central hills, the northern, north-central and northwestern provinces and in the Trincomalee, Hambantota and Munaragala districts. That's the weather update. And um, Before we wind up the Bulletin of News, back to the headlines. The National Poson Week commences today. New railway service from Anuradhapura to Mihintale. 
The president stated that through the Urumbe program, the government's intent is to express gratitude to farmers. Defected ballot boxes will be repaired. Applications for admissions in state universities commences at present. Foreign news, Israeli Prime Minister dissolves war cabinet. Sports, Sri Lanka and World Cup campaign with a solitary win. With that, we conclude the morning bulletin of news and it's back to Soundy to give you some good company.